South Mississippi before and after. When people did recover from the shock of what had happened, they had amazing stories of survival to tell. And what stories they were. When they say evacuate, everyone really do it. And I feel for so many of you out there, because I know exactly what you've been through, what you're going through. And the wind and stuff and the water was coming in, we seen the rooftop cover, and that's what was scared, you know. All you seen was the water coming over. Man, where can I start? The buildings were collapsing, one at a time. And uh, this last one, walls started shaking. I got my family out. I told everybody else to get out. I said the uh, water come up within seconds, uh, and they would have drowned if the wall hadn't blown out. We were in the house. We had to, the water was rising so fast. At first, it was a foot and a half, and we were just trying to save everything we could save. We started packing up, got the dog and cat, and then the water started coming into the carpet. And then the water started getting really high, and then we saw it like halfway up our cars. We, we watched the house next door to us get uh, uh, destroyed uh, as the storm surge came up uh, to the house. This is where I stayed, and my eyes took pictures continually of cars floating, of tires, debris, I mean of numbers on houses actually disappearing. And this is where I stayed for two and a half or three hours, and I guess I kept praying to the Lord. She hung on to her mama, but they washed up, up the road on a house that was crumbling. She couldn't hang on to her no longer. The whole parking lot then went underwater, and when, right when we started probably getting at least 100 mile an hour wind gusts, uh, the bottom floor started getting totally submerged. And I'm seeing my grandmother's cedar chest smashing, my TV, all the plates smashing, everything, my crucifix off the wall falling. After it kept rising, we were in the attic. We had to get out of the attic, break into our next door neighbor's two-story house to get up in the top of their house. All I could hear was just the wind and stuff hitting my house and the tree limbs hitting my house. And I just started praying so hard because my mama, they, they were supposed to come to my house, and we we're like, because her house is small, and, I, and I'm like, okay, mama, and y'all come to my house. Everybody was following me, and I went with the current down the street, actually, and ran into this first house, went inside this first house, and watched this last of this uh, second floor go. So I watched my TV float, my, my sofa, my chair, my rocking chair, which was antique, a cane bottom rocking chair. My swing that I kept on the porch, it was my mother's. I had just redone it, put new chains, you know, and I watched it go, you know, and the reason I don't have anything left in the home but myself, which I'm glad that I do, is because my home was open, my front door. The roof, one side of it, the back side started like, like flapping, and then it just, <laughs> the roof went off. And then um, my husband yelled, get off the phone, we got to go. And I was just praying so hard because I knew that if they weren't safe, that they were gone. The doors started popping out, the windows in the front started popping out, I guess from the water uh, pressure. And then it just kept on rising and rising and rising. We started seeing the, the roofs lift off across the street. We had to wade over in the storm with the wind and the water rushing still had uh, two elderly people with us. So he threw my cat, threw my dog, I stepped in the roof, jumped. I grabbed my dog, my cat totally disappeared. If it would have got up another six feet, then uh, obviously we would have been you know, underwater inside, so it's pretty scary in regards to not knowing how much the water is gonna come up um, and not knowing if we're you know, gonna survive or not. The water kept rising and rising. We had flashlights. We kept flashing down and looking and the water kept rising. And you know, you watch your possessions leave and you don't even care because that's not life. Your possessions are not life. I was saving my life at the time. My possessions were leaving. I would have done nothing to hold on to them. All I noticed, it was just devastating. Watch these buildings just fall one at a time. I ended up in the attic with my two dogs and um, we'll just watch the water come up to the attic line and, and there were white caps coming through the house. And then that sense of panic started of, we gotta have a way to get out of here. We thought about almost jumping to our neighbor's house. Thank God we didn't, that was obliterated. We think my, our other neighbors said by a tornado. And by the time it was over, I went out on my porch and I missed all the wind. And I'm sitting there on a column looking at this water just come whirling back to the bay. And it was unbelievable. You know, like I said, I waited it out and the water started subside. And once we realized the water had almost stopped rising, there was a sense of relief. 
and then it started actually dropping. And I kept a bottle of holy water on my table from a Catholic. And that holy water floated to me, and I kissed it. And I said, Lord, the same water that you blessed me with, <laughs> I get the chill, is the same water you could have chose to take my life with. And the water began to recede. At this point, it feels like it's starting to go out. You can see it moving. See the water? Now look, see it's going out. It's starting to drop. Look at that. That water is going out the front door, and that level is beginning to drop as we speak. About an hour later, some brave firefighters started walking along all the rubble, holding the gutters to balance themselves, yelling, is anyone in here? Is anyone in here? And after the storm, my sister right here, and them come to the house. And when she jumped out the car, it was a blessing because I thought I would never see my family again. Katrina had blown hurricane strength winds across our community for about eight hours. And she brought with her a storm surge that had never been seen before in South Mississippi's history, 35 feet in some areas. The destruction was overwhelming, incomprehensible, and heartbreaking. But things would soon, slowly, start to get better.